didn't want to meet me 25 years ago. I didn't have the experience I have now. I really, I don't have the grace I have now. I don't have, you know, I look at Glenn Stearns. I look at, he goes, you know, went through camp. You know, my gosh, I wonder what Glenn Stearns now. Right? I, I want to know, uh, Brent Gold is not even in his prime. He's in his 50s. Do you understand? He's going to get better. Seriously. He is going to get more energy as he reaches his 60s to his 70s. It's really a myth. It's a myth that when you're 25 or 30, you have the most energy. You cannot outwork me and Brent. Just so you know. You can't outwork David Gagne. I've seen it. You, you can't outwork the people that really know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, in the shortest amount of time. Okay? Don't give up. Okay? Anybody know the definition between successful and great? By the way, you made it here. That's a success. Some of you graduated from high school. Good job. <laughs> I'm not even going to college. Because I know half of you guys were like, well, I went to school. And then I met Kathy and I quit. <laughs> That was Brent's thing. By the way, you will have a successful real estate career. Susan and I sold homes for a long time. We were raising five kids. We were successful. But I didn't understand great. Here's the definition of great. By the way, I'm just looking at 10% of you to become great. Why? Because that 80 20 rule will, will rule my life. So we're going to do 80-20 and then 80-20 on that. Luckily, 4 or 5% of you, I'm hoping you become great. Write this down. You become great when your great-great-grandkids have your picture on their wall. <laughs> it's real. You become great when you leave a legacy. And that's what I want to talk about today. Amen. Right? There's 1995. Who are the people on the left? <laughs>
but, but I want to be great. I want that picture to hold up. How many of you all have a picture of your great great grandparents in your home? One, two, very few, three. Right? I don't have one of mine. I don't know my great great grandparents. Because they didn't leave something behind. All right? Now, uh, Susan and I have our Texas real estate license, and um, just so you know, uh, I sold in this area, we sold in this area for 27 years, so I'm not coming back to the DFW. And there's a, uh, at the corner of Custer in Plano, Texas, where we raised our five kids, at the corner of Custer and Legacy, there's a small little cemetery, all right? And there's a small little cemetery, this isn't a picture of it, by the way, this is just something I got off the internet. Uh, <laughs> I can't use the internet. Um, but it is small like this. And it's the, uh, as you know, in Texas, or anywhere, I'm sure, anywhere but out west, the richest people are the farmers, because they came out here in the 1800s, 1700s, and they stayed there, and then of course, the, sub, the suburbs came. And right there at the corner, I was with my six-year-old daughter. And I noticed this little cemetery, it's about that big. And I said, I gotta go in. And it's the Carpenter family. The Carpenters were famous. They owned a lot of land in Plano, Texas. And it was the Carpenters. So we looked at one great stone Carpenter. Carpenter, 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 Carpenter. And we get in the car, and my daughter, who's six years old, looks at me and she goes, Dad, you know what? She goes, where's the realtor cemetery? <laughs> historical. 
circle. And we've got what? A man. What momentum? What do you put your catchphrase? We got momentum. You gotta feel it. You gotta, you know, this is this is something. I, I, I talk to agents all the time. They go, well, you know, what, you know, what's wrong with the stock? And I whatever. I go, stop it. We got momentum like nobody's ever had in their life. Historical growth. Historical. Never been done in the history of real estate. Start talking like that. Right? Let me talk to you about Bob Mangold. Let me talk to you about legacy. I knew Bob. Bob's an agent in Phoenix, Arizona. He used to own exit franchises. Six years ago, we sold them all and came to a little company called EXP. Two years after he'd been with us, Bob Mangold, man, I read, he fell off a 30-foot ladder. I don't want to go into super detail, but he's in Phoenix. It was raining, which it never rains in Phoenix. So he went up there, he says, I'm afraid something's going to catch fire, really electrical fire. And he says, Gene, I slipped off the ladder. He fell flat on the ground, hit his head, broke his hip, broke his shoulder, broke his ribs, and had a head injury. Now he says, when I was in there and I had to learn how to walk again, I learned how to talk again. Bob says, Gene, I looked at my wife and I said, everything's okay. We got rid of Sherry. I just talked to Bob this week. I said, well, Bob, what were you making in red share when you said that to your wife? Um, he said, I was making about 15 to 17 pounds a month. I told her, our bills are covered. It's okay. It might take me six months to a year to learn how to talk again. What other company has that safety? Right? Today, four years later, I talked to Bob about this week. He said, Bob, I'm going to tell you your story, dude, because you affected me when it happened. He goes, Gene, well, I'm only making 70000 a month now. <laughs> right? This is changing agents' lives. This is leaving a legacy for their family, leaving a legacy for their, 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 their people. Now, one you might not know about, just last week, Kevin Cottrell. You guys know my buddy Kevin, who's been my partner through all this the last five, six years. A week ago today, I'm talking to him in the morning. He goes, gee, my left leg is giving me problems. It's a little numb. Meg, my wife, wants me to go to the hospital. They were in Orlando. They drive to the hospital, and they find out that he has an aneurysm in his hip, and it had uh, developed a clot already, and he should have been dead. And they go into an operation, and I know you guys know Kevin, you probably don't even know this story, I haven't shared it with a lot. But a week ago, I can't even pull it out and share it with you, I'll start crying. But he says, at the operating table, Tuesday night, a week ago, the doctor says, you might want to say goodbye to Meg. Right? And he says, and she, he says, right now, we don't have time to say goodbye to Meg. And he says, Meg, I've never told you how good she is. <laughs> he literally said this. He says, Call Gene and Susan. They'll have it all set up, and you will never want for anything the rest of your life. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, that was Tuesday. On Wednesday, the lead surgeon in the whole hospital came by to see Miracle Boy. He said, I'm literally wanting to meet the Miracle person. Because you should not have survived that aneurysm. Literally, you should not have survived. He says, I've never seen anybody survive an aneurysm like that. Right? And I said, Kevin, if you're not religious now, you're going to be religious now. <laughs> right? Because God news for you. There's, there's a reason Kevin survived, correct? Yeah. Right? He gets a story to tell now. By the way, he's in a walker. If you don't know Kevin, he's in really good shape. But he's got to learn how to walk again. But he's not worried, Marguerite. He's not worried. Right? This is what EXP is about. You got it? What are you going to say? There you go. We can stop right here. How many stories do I have to tell? Seriously, how many stories do I have to tell that are going to make you cry? I usually use that when I'm on Zoom with people. I said, look, I can't explain to you. Just like Orlando said in the last one. This is... 
an environment I've never seen. This is where we share like I've never shared before. It's weird. It is really weird. Guys, I've been a lot of real estate companies. This one's different. Okay, to create generational wealth, here's what I want you to do. You might want to take some notes. Find your purpose. Find your purpose. Guys, my purpose, and I didn't find it. I, I was successful because I was making money to raise my five kids. That's where a lot of you guys are. Well, I'm making money because I'm paying bills and blah, blah, blah. But when you find your purpose, what's my purpose? I'll tell you my purpose. I want every single one of you to have financial security for the rest of your life. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I don't want 10% of you to do it. I don't want 20%. I want every single one. Did y'all stand up for a second? I feel like I'm in church. <laughs> Can I tell you all how much I love you? Can I tell you? I want every single one of you to be a Bob Bangle, to be a Kevin Control. I want every single one of you to really feel the fact that I am not good at it. Brent is not good at it. Tell every single one of you to leave something behind. What are you going to say? I know, Gino! Sit on down, thank you very much. <laughs> Find your purpose. Find your purpose that will drive you. Everybody's like, well, Gene, you don't have to be here on this Zoom. I said, excuse me? I don't want to be on this Zoom. Don't tell me what I can do and not do. <laughs> Second thing, overcome your fears. Here's the biggest problem you have. For some reason, you won't talk to other agents. I don't know what the fear is. I can't describe it. I've heard it two million times. I can't talk. But Gene, you don't understand. I didn't do the production. They do. You don't understand, Gene. They don't know me. Don't know. And the fear in your body causes you not to do what? Action. Overcome your fears. I can do a whole seminar on this, but quite honestly, it's all about you. This is about you guys. It's not about the model. It's not about blah, 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 blah. It's about you. Once you overcome your fears and find your purpose, you'll create generational love. Keys to greatness. And who wants to be great? Say yes. Yes. Okay. Well, don't you want to be great? Randy, don't you want to be great? Come on. Here's you guys last year. Write down specific, write this down, huge goals. Why specific? So you can track it. So you can track it. Because without, without tracking your goals, if they're not specific, you can't adjust. You know, I want to recruit five agents next month. Right? Okay, I did three. Cool. All right, I'll try harder next month. You, you got to have specific goals. Guys, I've, I've not met any of my goals. Let me talk about huge. I've never met a goal. Ever. Ever. They're so huge. It's just like, oh, I failed again. Good. Because if you want to recruit 10 agents, well, 20 agents in a month, and you recruit five, okay. But if you want to recruit five, and you recruit three, how do you I've never, by the way, I, I make goals for EXT all the time. Lynn doesn't do it. I just do it. <laughs> Lynn's not here today, I found out. I'm going to say a lot of stuff. <laughs> You'll be here in a second. Oh, no. But seriously, it has to be specific. The more specific, when you aim at something, right? When you aim at something, if it's a huge goal, you'll do a different track. If you aim down here, the track is different. I want to sell one home a month. Really? Who has a goal to sell a one home a month? What's that all about? Why would you even make that goal? <laughs> Seriously, that was brand new. I didn't write down one, I wrote down five. Right? How many people have sold 18 buyers for a month by themselves? Gino. Gino, just so you know, I sold a lot of homes. Got news for you, man. I'm just telling you, I've succeeded, but I wasn't great. I've succeeded a lot, but I wasn't great. You know what? I'm dying. When I die, you're going to go to that coffin and you're going to go, damn, he's good looking. <laughs> I'm going to die the best looking person I possibly be. I'm going to be the best golfer I possibly be. I've decided this the other day. And you're going to, and all my kids are going to be there. They're going to go, wow. 
He left us behind. Does that help you guys? Woo! Let me tell you a story. Anybody got a Kleenex? Little Gino. Little Gino's got a little privilege. Wait, just, just a second. I got COVID privilege. No. <laughs> Something driving 
Kevin Contreras. It's going to be something bigger, right? Okay. Everything is 
our legacy. You want to be remembered? Go create something that'll look past you. Go celebrate everything. Go risk everything. Don't be afraid to risk. Get out of your comfort zone. This is some of my family, not all my kids, but this is some of my family in our back patio in Puerto Rico. Right? They come out twice a year and they just go crazy. We just have fun. But we're going to leave a legacy behind. I don't want you guys to just come and go, oh, let's sell more homes next year. Well, that was great. Now, thank you very much. You'll be successful, but you won't be great. How are you? Good to see you, Mark. So, anyway, what I'll leave you guys with is a legacy. We're doing this for you know, the kids, our family, and everybody says I'm doing it for my family. First of all, I want to do it. I want you to do it for you. Right. I want you to feel it. I want you to feel it that this is you're going to be a changed person after you leave. And then you're going to say to everybody that you can have the next two days, when I saw Jim Frederick get up and talk, oh my God, it changed my life. <laughs> right? So let's give it, let's give it up. What I want you guys to do is tomorrow morning, come prepared to learn how to produce more. In the afternoon, we'll do some more on, on, um, on how to attract people. But I want to tell you, just in, just in leaving with you, practice flying for the rest of your life. Thank you very much. And see you guys tomorrow.